Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our workshop on uh, layouts for, uh, let's see, stress-free layouts, we'll call it, and organic layouts. And But we're also going to be delving into maybe some theory behind layouts, because if you're like me, I like to know sometimes why something is the way it is. Um, and I'll learn it maybe a little bit better. So we'll delve into some math and science behind um, behind layouts, which is kind of fun. And uh, I'll introduce myself in a moment formally, but I'm Roseanne Hansen, welcome. And right now, if you all don't mind, if you could please turn off your videos and make sure you're muted. Uh, that will help me <laughs> by, that will help me uh, with the bandwidth for the, the recording. Uh, it doesn't suck as much of the, the internet down at this point because I record down to my local computer. So. Um, turn off your videos, please. And what we're going to do today is start with a slideshow. And I'm going to show you some of these theories, layout theories, things like that. And then we're going to go, I'll go into some demonstrations. I'll show you some of my pages and how this, this all um, generally works. Um, uh, and, and we're not going to be, um, we're not going to be super uh, like, Oh, what's the word? You know, we're not going to, the, the rules aren't like you have to do a layout this way because this is what the science says. Um, so don't think that we're going to be really rigid about that. Uh, we're just going to really enjoy these, these um, thoughts and ideas and kind of try to understand why a page is pleasing to, to our eyes. So with that, I will uh, then transition to, uh, I'll, I'll do my overhead camera and we're gonna I'm gonna show you a I'll pull up one of my virtual field trips and I'll talk you through like okay I just I'm sitting in front of the Brooks Range in Alaska is what I what I chose and and this is how I thought through maybe how I might start the page and and I'll play with some different scenarios and then we'll see how this all kind of works and and make it stress-free so it's not this this thing that that um that makes you crazy uh, that oh, I'll never be able to do this. So with that said, I'm going to get started now with my uh, slideshow. And Danny, if you could verbally just tell me, I'm gonna ask um, once I get it up, if you guys can see it, because just every once in a while, uh, Zoom will do something weird and I won't be able to, to um, <laughs> to see what's going on. Also, while I'm giving a presentation, I can't, uh, I can't see the chat. I don't wanna have to back out of my presentation and um, uh, look, at, look at the chat. So if something goes terribly wrong and, and you can't see something or I, I messed up, just come on verbally somebody and say, ah, stop, I can't see. You didn't, you know, you, you've lost the picture or something or your audio is awful. Um, but otherwise, keep yourselves muted, please. And uh, I'll check the chat when I come back on for questions, okay? So here I'm going to share. Okay, and you should be seeing the- Yeah, slides look good. Perfect, okay, thank you so much. All right, well, good morning. Uh, and welcome to Layout Strategies for Beautiful Pages. I'm Roseanne Hansen. I have my own Field Arts Institute where I teach nature journaling, uh, field sketching, minimalist watercolor. And I also am the art and science program coordinator at the 116 year old Desert Laboratory on Tumamoc Hill, part of the University of Arizona. It's a, a very, very famous field station. And through then that organization and my own, I do a lot of these workshops, some for free, some for, for fees. And I'm also author of Nature Journaling for a Wildlife. And if I can get it done over the holidays, a new book called Master of Field Arts. So today we are going to explore page layout and design how to use an organic approach to making attractive pages, but also we're going to acknowledge and learn some layout principles. 
And um, this always happens, this popped up. Someone requested that live transcription be enabled for the meeting. I'm really sorry, that's a University of Arizona paid subscription and we will not be able to do that. Um, so I'm clearing that. So please um, don't click that button anymore. It's not available except for a very, very large fee. Um, while also acknowledging layout principles. So getting back to our, our subject. So let's look at some of these layout principles. Or principles of design. So we'll be looking at eye flow, literally eye flow across the page, key elements that we wanna focus on, and proportions, both simple and complex. So those are the main things I've distilled down that I think can you can easily keep this in your mind if you want to be thinking more about page design as you grow as a nature journalist. All right, so thinking about page flow, this has some great science. This is from interactiondesign.org. Oh, and I have created for you all a, uh, a handout, a PDF, I'll put that in the, the, the chat when I'm done here, that's got all these links and things on it. So if I'm mentioning a resource or cool tool or whatever, it will be in that, that PDF. So interaction design is a user experience, um, science-based uh, organization that teaches um, this type of, of design principles. So here it's showing two types of page flow. If we can make sure everyone, someone is unmuted, if you can all please check your um, mutes. I don't know, Danny, you can find somebody's not muted. Um, I'm not seeing it here. Let's see. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that because sometimes that bombs our, our presentation. So, oops, I'm going to go back here. Okay, back to this one. So there are two basic ways that human eyes flow across the page. And, and this they determine through these really cool, um, what they, they, they were able to measure where, where the people's eyes hit on the page. You can see that on the lower right. But basically there are two ways we flow when we're reading something. And one is called a Z pattern, literally, you know, you go this way, then scan down that way, and then across or an F pattern, the letter F. So scan the top, move down, check the middle, move down. And this was, is, is really, this is how people view information. So let's look at this um, overlaying, looking at, at a, a nature journaling pages that, that we might think looks attractive, right? Um, so this is a Z pattern eye flow. So information across the top, then you've got the information um, coming down and across. And gosh, everybody, please check your mute. I've still got someone on unmute, um, unmuted. I've um, got a lot of participants and I really, okay, I'm going to have to pause for a minute. I'm really sorry. Oh, there we go. I got her. Oh. No. Hey, uh, Danny, I can't seem to mute Linda Potberg. Yeah, I was trying. I can't I'm either. trying. Okay. <laughs> okay, or at least just just stay nice and quiet during the presentation because we're it's kind of a bombing things here. Okay, so here's another look at a Z pattern eye flow. So you can see that the way your eye is going to move is, that, is I put a lot of elements across the diagonal and it just sort of naturally flows across the page. And we like that. That's how humans gather information. Let's look at an F pattern. So you would you know, scan the top and then you're, you're literally just kind of, I'm, I'm acknowledging that way that humans like to, to look at information by, by narrowing it down at the bottom. So more at the top and a slight diagonal even. Um, so that's a, that's a nice flow pattern that people really uh, gravitate to. And that's because of the science. It, it's how most people view information. In the, let's just, let's qualify that. 
um, in in the the part of the world where we are um, we read um, left to right. So we'll qualify that. Okay. So next, thinking about key elements. So humans process information visually and perceive elements in the order that designers of a page have emphasized according to these, these subjects. So let's look at these. And these are things you can you know, jot this down in the front of your journal as things to think about um, using as key elements. So size of objects, of sketches, of your text. So headlines or, or what have you. Color, emphasizing things with color or all one color. Contrast, the opposite. So um, having like really, really dark and really, really white. Repetition. White space is a powerful tool. I sometimes have people, you know, beginners um, will post a page and say, gosh, I really just, uh, I don't know what to do about that blank space there. And it's like, well, wait a minute, you don't have to fill up everything. Sometimes white space is really powerful. And then the number of objects that you might focus on. So, and oftentimes odd numbers are really pleasing. That's a good thing on a page It lays out a little better, but you don't have to get, don't, don't be like stuck on that. Don't worry about that. And then remember people back, going back to the page flow, people scan pages first rather than read them. So they're gonna follow those main elements first. So that's why we wanna think about those. So looking at this page here of a really cool project called um, the 10X Project. This was Kate Rudder, who's a wonderful um, nature journaler and thinker and teacher. And she got a bunch of us together and, and showed us this really cool film called um, The Power of 10. And it was made in 1977. And it, it basically went by looking like it started at literally the human DNA and then it zoomed all the way out into the far reaches of the galaxy. So she challenged us to um, choose something and then zoom out 10 times and depict that in our journals, really fun. So this page layout, let's look at what we think the key elements are. So size, yes. So two elements here, uh, grab the eye with size. The one you wanted the, the, the viewer to start with is largest, number one, and that was my subject, the spine of the agave plant. And, and, and then the other ones are all the same size, and they're numbered, but they're slightly smaller. So that tells the viewer how to, to look at things. And then the size of the headline, uh, much bigger, it's, it's a big block letters. So that, again, signals uh, the eye to go there. Repetition, we talked about. And then there are an odd number of, of objects on this page. So there are 10 circles and the headline. So that really follows these principles, these elements. Let's look at some more. What do you, what do you, what do you see as the main elements of this page? So give a look at that for a minute and, and see if you can kind of come up with what's, what are the main things about this page that, that was utilized to make it a, an attractive page a page that kind of works. So if you thought size, white space, and an odd number of focal points, you are correct. So size, I chose to do the hippo pool really big. This is in Botswana. And because it was beautiful and it was amazing and they were like hippos all over and crocodiles. And after I finished sketching it, we were standing above on the big viewing platform. So we were looking above um, a leopard walk through the, 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 the scene. So um, I, I didn't have a chance to add the leopard, but that was super cool. Anyway, so I did that really big, but then realizing, you know, I think it would be cool too. There was this plant that, that was growing all over down below. Um, I left space to, to draw sketched in a, the, the plant there. And then on the lower part, um, I had wanted to do this um, and just it worked well for a design point standpoint. 
um, just to remind me the different horns of the different antelopes. Um, so it, like you glance and you could tell, you know, the greater kudu or the impala or the water. So I, I put those down. Now let's, and that's three elements, big, but then three sketches and then a little bit of text. Well, what if I had put another picture down in that far right corner? Let's look at what that would look like. Hmm. Let's, let's look at, let's toggle. White space, because that's what that is. There's a lot of white around now. It wasn't filled in with something like this. So now the eye, it's, there's competition between those two paintings, those two sketches. And it, it's just not quite as pleasing, I don't think. I think that it's more impactful to keep that white space down there and not fill it up. I could have even left it blank or maybe just a few more words of text. Nice and powerful. Okay, let's look at the next simple proportions. Now, here's we're going to be getting a little bit more into the math and then we're going to geek out. So, simple proportions. You probably have heard this the rule of thirds, and it's really helpful. And we tend to do this naturally. So, what is the rule of thirds? It's literally dividing pages up into those thirds, whether horizontally or vertically or both. So for example, on this page, um, in general, the, the information flows across in these thirds, these are horizontal thirds. But if you look at just the right-hand page, it's more or less divided into uh, two thirds and one third. By having that species list on that far side, that's a column of thirds. And then I used the whole rest of that page was one, one size element, so a two third size column. That's the rule of thirds. It works really well and it's very pleasing and it, it makes it easier to kind of divide up pages. So in photography or sketching, um, what, what they tell you when you're using the rule of thirds as well as where to put focal points is when you have your, you divide your paper up into these like thirds like that, this grid, and you, you place the focal point over one of the interstices. So the intersections of the lines. And, and again, that's really pleasing to the eye. It's balanced more instead of putting the tree right in the middle. Although I'll show you, um, I have done that to great effect. If you really wanna make that like boom, the center. Um, there is no like, you gotta do it this way. Remember, these are just general great practices, but you can break the rules too and to great effect, break rules. So if you don't know it, your phone, when you turn on your camera, you can set, mine's doing it right now, you can set it so it shows as it's showing in the picture there. It's got a rule of thirds um, grid on it. You look, almost all phones are gonna have a setting that you can turn on a rule of thirds grid. In fact, some of them are really sophisticated. They'll do different, um, some of them will even do the golden mean and we're gonna talk about that. But as you can see from this photo, the focal point, the land cruiser driving off into the Saharan desert, um, that is on one of the interstices on the, the, the far left of the thirds. So super great for, for just, if you have a blank page and you're going, ah, oh, where should I put this? That's a great, great quick, quick tip. So another thing to think about too is harmony and or repetition of shapes. So this is not an odd number of columns. This is even numbers, but it works. I really like it. This is from Pat Kuning's pages. Um, there, it's harmonious. I love the way her, her writing and, um, and blocks work. And then each of those design elements, the sketches, wow, that really catches your eye. It's informative. This is great. So repetition and harmoniousness. That works super well in this one. It's not the rule of thirds, no. But again, it's, it's this many ways to look at these simple proportions. Okay, now <laughs> we're gonna geek out on complex proportions. 
a lot of you probably heard of the golden mean. So as you can see, similar grid type thing, but in this case, you, you take your page, your, your rectangle, and you divide it into eights, eights across, across the top, eight across the sides, so on each axis. And then you place your focal points near the intersections of the three eighths and the five eighths. And that creates a beautiful harmonious composition. This is often used by the old masters. This is, you know, Leonardo did this. It was really common to, to make sure that uh, a painting was within the, the golden mean um, it's called. So those are the, the intersections there. So the golden mean or golden rectangle um, is also known as the rule of five eighths. So just, that's just you know, it's sort of a, a, a great thing to remember. Now, it gets geekier, this is fun. So why do, is our eye drawn to this rule of five eighths? Um, visual harmony, we love it. We really are drawn to it. And it has to do with the math and it has to do with the human body. It's kind of cool. So the golden mean, this golden rectangle, the rule of five eighths represented as a ratio is this one to 1.618, which is known as phi, not to be confused with pi, phi. So one to 1.618, remember that. If you divide one by 1.618, you get five eighths, just as a reminder here, what that ratio is representing. And if we start looking at things like the human body, your digits in general are very close to the proportion of one is a, in the ratio to 1.618 of the, of the finger, of the, the major part of the finger, um, the digits one to 1.618. So is your hand to your forearm one to 1.618. And I found this on the um, on a, a, a beauty website. Apparently, Angelina Jolie's face uh, is so perfectly proportioned that everything is in one to 1.618. Kind of why humans define this as beauty, we tend toward being attracted to this ratio. So, so in theory, I thought that was fun. This was actually a website about plucking your eyebrows. <laughs> Apparently the golden ratio is used for eyebrow plucking. Um, that was new to me. Okay, now let's look at this in terms of page layout. We would call this the golden rectangle. Here it is, one to 1.618. And you can see that on the grid there on the, on the right back to that, that um, rule of five eighths. The, the pink part is, is the one to 1.618 uh, on the left, that's our ratio. And when we would lay out, we would use these to great effect. And here's the best geek out part. This is a represent, perfect representation, this golden rectangle of the Fibonacci number sequence. Now, I don't have time to go into all of this, but I'm putting a, a link for you in the PDF for a gr really great article on the whole like background of Fibonacci and, and how, how this all works and how to draw um, the Fibonacci spiral. Um, so as you can see, the Fibonacci number sequence is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, blah, blah, up to infinity. And looking at that spiral, look at the tiniest, tiniest square right there by the 532, you're backing up. So zero, and then one, you have one square. And then in the next, you have two squares. And in the next, three, and then five, and then eight, and then 13, and then 21. It, it builds, and then if you, you connect these, it's a spiral and it's infinite. Um, you can go out forever and it repeats the same pattern. So this Fibonacci number sequence, the golden rectangle, the spiral is 
in so many of nature's forms from our own DNA to hurricanes to the way galaxies form. It's super amazing. Again, this is kind of, it's within our lives. It's within nature. It is something that we are drawn to these proportions, these, these amazing mathematical rules. So here's the final, just kind of geek out. If you take a Fibonacci number and divide it by the next number. So on that square, say we take 21 and divide it by 34, you get 0.618. So choose any of them, it works. Now, here's a fun tool, and I put the, I'll put the source on. This is a Fibonacci gauge that you can use to lay out your pages. Um, super lightweight, very fun. I put the Fibonacci numbers on mine and the ratio, and great way to just check something if you're not sure. It's just super geeky, too. Um, it's handmade by a guy on Etsy. And I'll put the information in the chat on that. And here's, here's so before I knew all this, before I bought this, this Fibonacci uh, gauge, I didn't realize that I was naturally laying out my pages according to this golden rectangle idea or, or the, the rule of five eighths. So here's, I divided a page up and it's one to 1.618. And on that side, same thing with the top and the bottom, it's cut in proportions. It's almost exactly one to 1.618. So I went back to like a bunch of my pages. Hmm. <laughs> this one fit. It's just so fun. So that's a super fun tool. Um, now let's, let's um, review and recap these, these um, kind of three things that are very useful. So remember iFlow? kind of the Z thing um, and the F, how, we, how the eye likes to move on a page, process information. Um, remember key elements, they are size, color, contrast, repetition, white space, and odd numbers. And then our simple rule of thirds or the very complex golden rectangle. Now, how, what is the process? What do, how, do we, how do we do this? Um, here's, here's what I recommend. And this is, I, I thought really hard about how I do this. Why did I end up with, with kind of naturally going to these rule of, rule of thirds or, or five eighths? Um, and this is, this is what, you, what, what kind of I think through and I do it subconsciously, but you can do it consciously. Um, so first choose a layout kind of, what are you gonna do? Is it gonna be just a single page horizontal? or excuse me, vertical, or is it gonna be horizontal, a double page spread? Or are you gonna turn your single page sideways and make it horizontal? Just decide that first. Um, are you gonna use the rule of thirds? Are you gonna divide it into thirds? If you're doing so, are you gonna use columns or do you use shapes? Um, and I'll be walking you through kind of how I made these, these um, make these decisions on the fly. Um, also giving myself permission to just yeah, experiment. Um, and eventually you'll come on something that you really like and that clicks with you. Um, so remember to think about flow, like where to put information you want to be the, the main things where these elements, like flow is also related to your elements, where are you gonna put the elements so that they end up in places where people are going to naturally view them. So, and what are these going to be? Are you going to size? Are you going to do like a big thing and then a couple of small things? Is it going to be color? You're just going to do one thing in a bang up color. Um, repetition. Don't forget white space and the power of that. I tend to mark in some elements ahead of time and I'll show you how I do that. Go for harmony especially maybe odd numbers, or if you're using even numbers, maybe all the same shape. Um, harmony is something that we really gravitate to. And that golden ratio is, is a wonderful tool for that. And then this is the hard part. So then relax and concentrate on your observations and recording. 
And that's the part that's hard when you're just starting out is you're, you're, you're so, you get angst about, is my page going to be beautiful? But if you do a few of these things ahead of time, mark out a few little spots you're gonna to return to. And in the end, you're gonna end up with a really lovely page. So now I'm gonna walk you through some of these and how I, how I, how I did it and what they are. So first we're gonna look at, let's just sort of um, dissect this. Um, so the layout of this particular page, uh, pages, double page spread, um, is horizontal. I used rule of thirds in, in several different ways with three columns and an accent box. So as I mentioned before, so it's kind of in thirds horizontally, but also look at that right-hand page that is the rule of five eighths right there. The columns are not even. The right-hand column is that um, one and 1.618 on the left. Look at that, it fits right in. So that's why the layout works. Did I do that like specifically? No, it was an organic way to do it. I knew that doing my species lists on the far right, which is something I almost always do when I'm in a new place, um, that naturally adds a one to 1 1.618 ratio on the page. Um, for my shape of journal. So let's look at flow. So this is kind of a hybrid, I think. It's kind of heavy on the F information on the left-hand page, but the, there's kind of a Z going on with the, the, the way the zebra and the other elements go across the page. So it naturally lets the eye go across. It sees the little impala um, kind of pictographs, I call them, um, down to the box and then back to the zebra. So it's, it's got a nice, nice flow to it. So the elements are my metadata boxes, the bigger sketch, the focal sketch, and then the box, the little accent sketch. Those were the main elements, heavier weight. You could also say maybe the Impala too, but they tend to kind of go into the background because the color is on the other ones. There's harmony there. The text is well balanced with um, the, the sketches, although I am going to show you one of my pages where it's like almost all text. So um, very heavy on text. So that could be a design element too. And then it's it's a relaxed feeling page. It isn't like all mm, like total art over the top, crazy perfect. There's scratch out marks. Um, I'm focused on the observations. There's lots of question marks, um, meaning those are things like oh, I didn't know. Um, I need to look that up or um, you know exclamation point. Wow, we saw sixty five baboons. That was incredible. Um, so again, part of a design might be trying to get across this feeling of discovery and excitement. So it's relaxed. It isn't like, I, I didn't even use a ruler to draw the boxes. So you're gonna have your own style that might not be for you. You, you might want to be like, oh no, I have to have perfect rectangles. That's fine, make that part of your style. So I'm gonna de, um, deconstruct this page now. So what did I do first? What I always do first, those of you who, who know me, I'm the metadata queen, right? So the first thing I always do, I get my metadata box. I always do these the same way, always at the start. Um, and it's got all the information about um, position, where you are, the, the elevation, the longitude, latitude, um, the conditions, the atmospheric conditions, weather, um, sunrise, sunset, um, and then the context. Um, where, where, you know, where you are and what's going on. So always finish that. So the next thing I, I would do, since this is my blank page and I'm like, oh, where am I starting? I'm, I'm overwhelmed. We're in Botswana for the first time and this is just, ah. So next thing I do is I'll pencil in a column 
on that far right. And I just run either, sometimes I do a pen mark, sometimes it's just pencil, just so I'll remember it and I don't accidentally draw into it. I want a whole, I know I'm gonna be seeing a lot of stuff here. So I put a whole column there, a whole line all the way down. And you know that's gonna be blank for a while. And I'll write species. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll write um, things seen and heard. Um, so uh, could be anything. So that's the second thing I do. And then the third thing I do, oh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a box here to remind me at some point during the day, I'm, I'm gonna fill that with something interesting. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> then I'll write, um, just to kind of get started for the day. Remember there's nothing else on here but the box and the column is I'll, I'll write my prose. This is literally like that context I was talking about. Um, this is my narrative and this is how I get started. This is how I warm up. <laughs> and as I was, I was writing this, um, so we left Sakanaka camp um, uh, during the night, an elephant had forged about 30 feet from our campfire. And then as I'm doing that, all of a sudden the martial eagle like landed in a tree. So I did like a really fast sketch there. And then later at lunch, I decided when we were watching zebras, um, and I noticed this really crazy, interesting brown stripe in between on these particular zebras. So I drew that during lunch. And then through the rest of the day, I added the rest of, of the stuff as things happened. And it worked really well. So that's an organic way to do it. I set up a framework using some of these, these, these layout principles leaving my box so the termite thing just up, you know, appeared to me. And then the rest is text. And I fill in species as I go. So that's a really organic way to do it. You can make little reference sheets. I borrowed this from Bill Singleton with, with um, permission. He sticks this in the front of his journal to remind him of fun different ways to do layout. So you might just draw lots of little you know, double page, single page, um, rules of thirds, golden mean, you know, to set up something ahead of time. And then if you're completely stumped while you're out, you know, and you're overwhelmed, just maybe you'll go pick one of these and pencil it in. So that's a, that's a, a reference sheet idea. Now, we're gonna head out now and I'm, we're going to look at my, my field trip and virtual field trip <laughs> and go, okay, this was supposed to stop. Nope, I lost, no. All right, come on Zoom, there we go. Are you guys, did you lose me all together? Nope, there you are, <laughs> thank you. Um, great, so let me look at the chat, see what questions are there. And if we've got anything here. So can me, let's see. All right. Can we get a PDF of your vignettes reference sheet? Um, hmm, I don't know what that is referring to. So we'll have to come back to that. Um, I am putting my PDF. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so oops. <laughs> Um, yes, I'm going to put those links right now to the PDF with um, these, this information. Um, the vignettes are from uh, Bill Singleton, so I'm not going to share that. Those are his. Um, you can certainly look at the recording and come up with your own. Um, come up with your own vignettes. I mean, you'll be able to see on the recording, but I don't have permission for him from him to hand it out as a handout. I got from permission to use that in the, the uh, slideshow, but I'm not comfortable giving out his own vignettes at this point. I'm sure he wouldn't mind, but I would have to get specific um, permission from him. But I would, I would do your own, you know, just come up with your own creative, creative way um, to do it. So Catherine Owen asks, um, doesn't the combination of Z and F on one spread confuse the viewer? Um, I, had, I felt I had a hard time figuring out where to focus on the example. I, I can see that for sure, um, but if you look at an F 
um, kind of flow, it ends up with a diagonal anyway, because it's heavy on the top. And then it has a bit more in the middle, and then it peters out toward the bottom. And that creates that diagonal is what I was talking about. So maybe I, I misspoke, shouldn't have said, you know, it's a combination of Z and, um, but you're going to get a diagonal with most F leaning um, layouts. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Um, so Mary and a couple other people are reminding us that um, scrapbooking, which is a thing, I don't know a lot about it, I'll like nothing about it, but apparently there's lots of, of similar tips and layout um, uh, like templates and things you can get and that might, might help some people. So if anyone has those resources, put that in the chat, that would be fantastic. Um, let me, I'm going to put another couple things into um, the chat here. So I have lots more tutorials and things and pictures on my website. And that's the, the link to the main field arts landing page. Um, oh, good question, Diana. Um, how do you decide where to add color? Well, a lot of it had to do with um, the visual flow, right? So on that page with lots of sketches, I, I remember I left one, one or two of them uncolored and the ones I wanted to emphasize would have color or you might just do one color and the rest are just pen and ink. Um, so it's, it's, it's really gonna be, your eye's gonna go to the color. So if you wanna emphasize something, color it. If you want to, like if you colored, if you had like five or six sketches on a page and you colored all of them, you might be getting a little busy, busy, but we'll look at some of mine and see if any of that really comes true. It's best to just go look at examples. So what I'm going to do and um, now is I'm just gonna switch to my uh, document camera. And last time I had a little trouble with, with um, QuickTime players, so I'm going to try it a different way this time and see see if 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 we do this. Um, first, I'm going to take you on this virtual field trip, and then we're going to talk about um, the how I decide to do things. Um, let's see. So, any other questions before I jump? Okay. All right, let me go to share. Um, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to try QuickTime Player again. If you guys were with me last uh, for the Ochre workshop, we got terrible feedback. It was QuickTime Player. So I can try it, but I'm nervous because it really bombed it. Um, so let me show you the, the virtual field trip first. So I have to just share my desktop and we're going to here. So can someone verbally tell me if you're seeing yep, looks good. Brooks Range in Alaska. So this is my virtual field trip. Um, where are we? Here's, we are on the Dalton Highway, right? Just crossing over the Brooks Range. Um, this is Galbraith Creek in Alaska. And um, so we are way north of the Arctic Circle here. And what I'm going to do is walk you through. Here we are. We just arrived at Galbraith Creek. We've just driven up the Dalton Highway. How do we like process this and get this onto a page? How, what are, what are some of the, the, the things I might be thinking about um, when I sit down, which I did. I sat down right here at the creek. And I was like, oh, okay, now what do I do? I've got a blank page. Well, remember first I'm gonna do my metadata and I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna to switch to my document camera and then we're gonna look, look at that. So huh, just deep, deep breath, relax. While I'm relaxing, do my metadata. Um, this is the, um, this was uh, about September 5th. This is uh, Brooks Range, Alaska. I would put my, my uh, longitude, latitude, elevation, um, sunrise, sunset, and this is just helping me get in the flow. I, I'm observing, I'm listening, I'm looking, um, I'm looking around. There's this beautiful creek, um, lots of willows. There's 
it's a beautiful day. And I'm just absorbing all of this as, as I go. These are willows and there's birch, little dwarf birches are turning red. Um, there's my husband off hiking. <laughs> and there's this really amazing, all around me are these incredible gooseberry um, shrubs with these just beautiful translucent berries. So like that really caught my eye. So it's like, hmm, I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna add that. I like that. So I start thinking about my page. So what am I, what am I going to do? Well, I love landscape pitos. I'm in the Brooks range. It's super famous. This is like, ah, oh, so gorgeous. This is the um, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is right at, at the edge here um, and around us. Um, some of the most incredible wilderness in North America. We are literally on the edge. So I wanna do a landscape pito too. So how am I gonna fit that in? Well, those make really good elements when you do a little landscapey thing and then maybe a detail. So from a layout perspective, from a nature journaling perspective, if you're completely lost on what to do, you might start with a little landscape sketch or a map. If you're just not into landscapes yet, little landscapies, um, sketch a map of Alaska or and, and where you are on the map. Um, and then some detail elements. So let me, am I going to be brave? and try to launch QuickTime Player. I'm gonna do that. And if I start getting weird feedback, I'm going to bail on that. So <laughs> let me, uh, okay. All right. Cause this way I can toggle back and forth between the view that we're seeing and this everything sounds great but there's the um volume oh, thank you uh, thing on there yep i just there there that should make it go away <laughs> that's Perfect. thank you happens. yeah so let me let me like use some of our our what we've been talking about so i've decided on um my subjects and now how am i going to put those into elements well one of the things i wanted to show you so i'm i'm going to do this do this um play with circles because there's a new tool I've, I've been playing with, which is a circle protractor, which is so fun to make circles in your journal. So doing shapes. So let me see what, what I think I can come up with that way. Um, but first I'm going to, I'm gonna sketch this, you know, on, a, on this, this is just a uh, uh, copier paper. Get rid of that so we have a better, and let's, let's see what this might look like. So first thing I wanna do is, is that metadata. So um, here's the, if this was my journal, it's, it's going to be basically that. Let me show you my journal for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, let's move, zoomed out. There's, whoops. Um, so it's uh, nine by six pages. So the proportions are very similar. And um, so here's here's an example. This is just something I marked of, of a layout. It's really text heavy, but it's got the elements of the boxes. And look, here we have that rule of, of, of uh, five eights again. Um, but this is, this is how I, I do my, my pages are like that. So I'm gonna do a double page spread and this is what it would be like. And um, let me, I'm gonna use pen so you guys can really see it. But what I'm gonna be doing is, is playing. Now, if you guys have questions, just go ahead and verbally ask them since I'm on a, a part of Zoom right now that makes it really hard for me to go see chat. So if you have a specific question about what I'm doing right now, go ahead and ask it verbally. Just turn um, off your mute, say a question, and be sure to turn mute back on. So let's, let's experiment with, okay, well, let's do our metadata because that's what I always do first. I told you I would sit down. Um, here we are. 
let me see if I can make this just a little. I'm going to throw this to the side for a minute. Here we are. We just sat down at the Brooks Range, and I've got my notebook in my lap. And what am I? What am I going to draw here? Oop. I showed you the berries and things. So first thing I might I, I do though, as I said, <laughs> I'd like hurry up, just do it. Um, so we we give the date. Remember, we want position, which is date, time, location, where we're at, the, the longitude, latitude. Um, I'm just going to use a ballpoint pen for this. Um, so this is, um, what did I say? It was like September, um, I think it's fifth or sixth, 2021. Um, we are on the Brooks Range. Alaska. A question real quick. Sure. When you're doing your metadata, if you're at a location where you know you're not going to have internet, obviously, um, Alaska and all, um, would you research that ahead of time, the Latin long, the... Oh, good question. Those kind of things that you might just not know off the top of your head? Absolutely. Um, Excellent question. Um, oh, this got really wobbly. Um, let me show you. So under my mapping, uh, I use Gaia GPS Pro or Gaia GPS. And this is not reliant on internet. This is phone, your, if your phone has GPS in it, which you need to, um, that's the location information. Your, your phones have location information is based on a GPS. Um, so this is going to show where I am. And let's see, I will, um, oops, no, I didn't want to record. Um, I want to, I haven't used this since that last trip. So I would go to where I am and it would give me, you now I want to add a waypoint. Ah, there we go. Here we go. So, oops, oh, it doesn't. Uh, let me turn it. <laughs> it's not going to. I have to turn this so you guys can see it. So, there's my latitude, longitude, elevation of where I am at this point in the world. Um, other other um, apps that do that is your own compass app, um, which comes with. Uh, uh, iPhones, and I think Androids have, should be the same, much easier to use. There's my latitude, longitude, and elevation. I could turn off my, my cell, anything. It, this is not reliant on anything but the GPS. So does that, I hope that answers your question. That was very helpful. Thank you very yeah. much. So this is my wobbly metadata. It's normally a bit nicer than that. So I always have like, here's my symbol for the moon. I'm just doing this really fast. Um, I always draw like a little representation of, of what the sunrise was like. It was sunny with a little bit of clouds um, like that. And then I would put, you know, uh, partly cloudy. I would put, you know, let's just call it full moon. I don't have, I would have to look it up. And then I would put moonrise, sunrise, sunset times in here. I'm not going to fill all these out. This is my longitude, latitude, elevation. Um, down here, I would put, you know, it was um, 30 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning and the high, if I know it yet, is um, was 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, again, if you don't have internet, um, this is a great tool. This was my birthday present this year. This is a, a weather station in, in, in your pocket. It's called the Kestrel. Wind speed, wind, um, uh, yeah, wind speed, uh, temperature, barometer, dew point. It's got everything, uh, not reliant on the internet. So that's how I would take my measurements here. Um, great little tool. So, okay, so I've got my metadata. You guys will see my more beautiful metadata here, but <laughs> let's just keep that. In. I'm going to make this a little higher so, so you can see it. But um, 
let me just experiment here. What if I go to pencil? So I want my species. So am I going to see a lot of species today? No, it's pretty quiet up there, right? It's, it's not like Africa where I'm going to get dozens and dozens of species. So I'm going to pencil in a column for species. Is, does this look good? Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting here. This is, I'm, I'm showing you my thought process. How about if we play with putting a landscape here, landscape ito, and then those cool berry, the, 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 the moose, mooseberry plant here and here. Um, and let's use circles. So this is a fun tool. This is part of my, my um, this is in my new discovery kits, which I've been just introduced. Um, so let's put, let's make the landscape ito um, down here. And you choose one of the, the circles here. And I'm gonna do it in a circle. This is so fun. Look at that. Yay, perfect circle. Unlike my, my wobbly metadata. And then maybe let's, let's see what it would look like. Again, I'm experimenting here. I did two more circles. So three main elements. This is a fourth element, but it ends up dividing the page. So into that uh, rule of five eighths, because let's check it out. There we go, just about made it a little small. So if I wanted it to be perfect, I would scoot it over a little bit. You see that? So this would be more in alignment. So I, I generally just use my eye, um, but my with my, so I'm experimenting. So let's see what several circles would look like and they're different sizes. So let's make smaller ones. Um, let's see if I wanna put it here, I'll put it go. Put one here and then let's not put them right on top of each other. Let's go ahead and put another one down here that is a little bigger. Oops, I picked the wrong size. That's why we do pencil first on these because um, if you pick the wrong size, then you can change it. Um, if you like the size, you can go back and, and use it with pen. Yeah. Slightly bigger. Roseanne, can I just ask a question? Sure. Can you tell me exactly what that tool is called that you're using? Oh, sure. Yeah. And this is in the PDF that, that I, I sent you guys. Uh, oh, I forgot it is not. Um, it is called the Helix Circle Protractor. I mean, it does all sorts of other things too. You can use it to measure and draw angles. You can hold it up to something and measure the angle using, well, like here it is zero and you would, you would measure the angle, say of a tree trunk or a cliff or something. It's pretty cool. So, but I do offer these in my, my um, discovery kits. So, um, so I'm, I'm liking this layout. Um, I like it and I probably, make my, my, my uh, species thing just kind of hit there just for the, you know, just because, um, I don't know, I can always change that. So what I would do then is I would, I would write my, my uh, remember the context, so our metadata position, where are we? You know, latitude, longitude, elevation, um, then condition, what is the weather? Um, this is the, the, where I would put wind speed. So a single bar like that's gonna be less than five miles per hour. Um, one bar in the middle is partly cloudy and they look like stratocumulus. So that I would put there and then I would put barometric pressure reading, whatever that is in inches, mercury, et cetera. So position condition. And then this is where I would write the context. What's going on, my pros? And, write that on there like that. And then continue up here um, as, as I'm sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm observing, let's, let's look here. Um, you know, I would talk about the beautiful Brooks range. What am I hearing? What birds I would, I would write, um, you know, did I, uh, or, or I, 
maybe I, I write remem remembering uh, when we came over the pass, we saw dolls, sheep, um, or uh, just whatever birds I'm hearing. So, you know, uh, ptarmigan, uh, just, you know, willow ptarmigan, uh, ptarmigan, um, et cetera. So now you can see that that's just, I really like the way that's looking. So I would go ahead and maybe do like, make my little landscapey toe like, I'm just gonna do like really rough here. So here's like a bunch of boulders, which is like the, this is like a super rocky creek. And then highlight that beautiful snowy peak back there. And you know, I make sure I when I when I did the sky, I'd color in, make sure I had some nice fluky clouds. Here's like a rock in this creek. And I would I would watercolor in the creek so it's nice and pretty. And um the the willows back there. So <laughs> just a, a quick little scribble to show you like what that would look like if we if we if we got that going here. There's the edge of the creek. Um, and then I would go, let's look at that cool berry. Um, so this is uh, mooseberry. They're super translucent and that's gonna be a gorgeous color. So this is beautiful colors. And then I would probably just zoom in on just berries for here. So really zoom in. If, if you wanted this, if you want per perfect circles, um, I, could, I could go use my, this here, oops, I didn't even get that right. Um, there, and these are somewhat uniform in size, you know, so there, quick, if you really want perfect circles. Um, and then just a few of the, the details, and then I would watercolor in the, uh, the rest. Um, and, and make those really translucent and cool. And then be sure to write in species. Um, I have the species name on the, there. And then the size, you know, how, how big are these? These are um, like, uh, not very big, like six millimeters. And then here I would zoom in on one of those cool leaves. Um, The map is covering up most of that one leaf. I can't quite zoom in um, because of the way I'm doing this here. Let me see. Oh, no, there. So the leaves are like really fuzzy, hoary, have a, a lot of um, fuzz on the back side of them. Anyway, I just want to show you how what what this hypothetical layout uh, would look like. So there's a how I would do the the leaves, and then I would um, do it like this, and that layout really works well, I think. Um, so you keep as you're observing, and I'm looking. I, I keep looking around. And you know, there I could see find something else to write about, like um, what are the willow species? You know, what are what am I what am I seeing? Um, I saw caribou. Could you those. could you make some of those pencil sketches a little darker because it's a little hard? I know it's it's just a rough draft, but it's a little hard to see them. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, it depends on screen. Like my screen, it looks fine, but yeah, different screen, different lighting. So so that's one way to do it. Now let's, let's experiment with a slightly different way. Um, let's do, uh, I will use 
pen so it shows a little more. Um, I have to turn this to do it, but um, this is our metadata, blah, 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 because I want to just zoom through this. I, I never use a ruler for my metadata. So sometimes it's really wonky, especially if I'm rushing like I'm doing right now, but that's okay. Oh, Dan, yeah. Is there is there a PDF or anything that um, has all of the little weather sim, uh, symbols that you're using? Yes, on my tutorials page. Um, so if you go to the, the link and that's gonna be on the PDF too, you go to tutorials, you go to the downloads and resources and there's a whole section on weather stuff. Sweet, thank you. Yeah. So let's, here's another approach we might have, kind of using the same theme, but but a different way to, to have your, um, your focal points. So why not, you could do either a map or maybe we do our, a, a much larger landscape veto across like this. Um, this is the, the snowy mountain, um, and we have our willow bushes in our foreground here. And maybe we just even have a, a suggestion of the creek and our, all these big boulders down here. It would take me a few minutes to kind of work that out, but but you know, this would be the creek, should have moved that up a little, but this is just, I'm just doing some, some ideas then, because I love doing landscape beaches, so that would like make me really happy, and then I would, I would mark out, maybe I, I leave a, I put in a, a rectangle here, I'm going to leave it, because I don't know what I want there yet, um, do I, do I do the species thing here, hmm, you know, I kind of feel like if I did that, it just kind of would, I don't, I don't like that. So no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't think I would do that. I think what I would do here is I would do my, do my prose. And this is just the way I do it. You, you might have a completely different way you're going to, to shape your pages here and maybe this is where your clouds are you don't even you could write into your clouds um i kind of like it sometimes when when you write into the 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 clouds and maybe even you know you have some you continue your sketch underneath like that um and then what is the element that goes here because now we have kind of two two points here you're going to want something i would say you're going to want something here what is it i don't know yet because i have i'm going to be there for a while i'm going to 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 have to to form so i might take my pencil and remind myself i'm not going to do another box but i i want to remind myself to leave that so i penciled that in so as i'm writing there i kind of like that balance better and now Roseanne? we're in thirds yes we can only see part of your uh, drawings Huh, so the paper. it might be your view. This is the whole I have full screen. Yeah. Is everyone else having the same problem? I'm just I see the left part and a little bit more, but that's it. Huh. I see the whole thing on my screen. Yeah. I can see the whole thing. Yeah, okay. I can see okay. it. That, that's so, fine. That's good. Why well, I try to reduce your picture over on the right? That's that's probably what it is. Um yeah. On Zoom, you can grab the divider and move it. Yeah. It but I tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm, I'm going to go back to um, that. Did that help? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Let's, let's do that because I don't really, I don't need that because um, we're just talking theory now. So I think here what would work really well is if I drew, I, I think a botanical drawing, um, and, and probably that berry because I would do the colors, which would help there. So I would, I would do a slightly smaller. And, and this time I think I would, I would, I would do the. Is it doesn't have a bounding box, um, so there. Let me 
erase that because I didn't, I don't want any more boxes. That really wouldn't work well. Um, so I would do another botanical sketch here of, of that, the cool berries like that. And then this would be text, writing about that plant, um, et cetera. And you use your text to frame like that. And then I think that works really well. We have an, a big focal point here. This would be a lovely watercolor. You're gonna pull out something else here. It might be a bird later on. It might be another cool plant, who knows? Um, that's how, how I would just go about no pressure um, way to just relax and get this done. And you know, if I have an hour to sit and enjoy, that would be really, really fun. So here's two completely different ways you could approach it with that layout. Uh, so let me see, I'm going to stop share for the well, moment and look at this. Um, so at the chat and see what you guys have been, what, what we have. Um, so, oh, someone's having trouble with the PDF. I can email it to you directly. Um, so uh, it might just be your, your uh, uh, your your system the the pdf does not have um like all of the the words on it it's it's links to resources and things so not sure why it's not let me try just dropping the pdf in um hold on make sure i find the right one okay i'm, I'm dropping the pdf into the chat see if it just attaches it's uploading so you might be able paula to just download it from there you may have a setting that's not allowing downloads. I'm not sure. Um, okay. Um, you don't have, in theory, you don't have to have Dropbox. It should open it in your browser and then you can download it from there. You don't have to have an account on Dropbox. So, okay. Um, right, so other questions? I'm losing some of the track. Um, so someone said, oh, <laughs> Melanie, I'm sorry, I should have defined landscape. Uh, John Muir Laws started calling little landscapes. The ITO is a diminutive in Spanish for something little. So, um, you know, a little little dog is a perito. Um, so a landscape, a little landscape in your journal that's like just small, we call them landscapitos. Um, so Deborah Ru asks, do you ever use page titles? Almost never, but that's just my style. I think now what I'll do is let me show you some other examples and let's look at past pages and see if, if some of this stuff um, pings up, if, 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 if uh, if I was or wasn't paying attention to, to page flow and layout. Sometimes I just get so excited. I just like, oh, I just fill up the page and it's like, oh, well, that didn't quite work because I was just like not paying attention, but I was happy journaling. Um, Deborah, go ahead and ask verbally. Oh, I was just curious if you ever did it so that when you're paging through without getting into the, the metadata, et cetera, where you were at or mm -hmm. what I, was inspiring to you? I do not use page titles generally, unless I've got a little project I'm working on. For example, when I did the, um, uh, remember when we did the solstice tracking where we spent a day tracking the sun? Yes. The sky? Yes, then I did a title. Um, because otherwise in your journal, you might open up and go, well, what, what is this? <laughs> Why did she do like 10 suns across the sky? Um, so, uh, but other people will, instead of doing, so, so my journals, let me switch to, I'm just going to go back and so you can see. Um, and, and by the way, I love your little bookmark that has the, oh. uh, the metadata on it. Yes, uh, um, very handy. 
those those I mail out now with all all um, book orders. Um, if you want one, email me and I'll drop one in an envelope to you. If you haven't gotten one, if you if you have ordered things from me um, and and it was before, it's it's for people who've ordered things from the website. I don't sell them. I guess I could. They're just not really intended for that. But you could just print it out too and make your own. Um, I can drop it in as a PDF. Uh, but that I came up with that uh, mnemonic, the position, condition, and context specifically for my new book, um, The Master of Field Arts, because it's a way to just remember what metadata is for. Metadata is literally data that goes with complements and is important to supporting all other data in your field book. So without knowing where something is and what was happening around you, um, your information just doesn't mean as much because, and this goes back to Deborah, your question about do you use titles? Um, the reason I don't is um, that my, my, my notebooks, my field books are all about observation, learning, nature information, natural history. I'm not intending my pages to be art pages. Now there's a lot of people who nature journal as, um, as art journals. And that's where you would do some of the beautiful headlines and things. It depends on what your your goal is. Uh, so, yeah, I I don't I just don't use titles. Um, let me let me show you a few things here that I pulled out. Um, but remember, remember, I was talking about the one element thing, and then put it right in the middle. Where here here's an example of a page where. I broke that like so-called rule um, of putting one thing right in the middle. So how did that work? Well, I think this worked really well. This is a highly text heavy entry. Um, it's all about, I was, I was going and looking for Arizona walnut trees so I could make walnut ink. And I think it just works. And I also think it works really well. Remember we talked about contrast um, tone as, as part of the element. No color makes this a really cool page because it's all about black and white. And it's very, very journal-y, right? It's, it's more on the text part. But you can see this did break it up in that 1 to 1.618. Um, what are the birds I saw and heard or the animals I saw and heard? But that works. Um, here's another example of someone asked about color. How do you know what to um, color and what not? So here's an interesting um, way that I, I approached um, this, this spread. Um, I started with my metadata and just some prose. Then I really wanted, I was so excited about being at the farthest point north, north up, up, um, at Point Barrow and um, that we were looking directly east, you know, all the way to the top of Russia. Um, so I wanted to just sort of get that expanse. I sketched in the landscape bito, which is a seascape bito. And then the, the rocks were these beautiful colors, plus there was some old colored glass um, and green rocks and red rocks. So I drew that. And as, as you see, I, I continued it over, but I didn't color this part. I just colored that part. That helped contrast, like now it's telling the viewer, bing, that's the thing I want you to focus on. And then I sketched um, the whale jawbone arch and no color because I really wanted this to be the main focus. So I like the way that worked. And there's three elements. It's roughly in those thirds again. Let's take a look at that. Yes, it is, just roughly, not exactly, but roughly. And let's see what happens when I, no, this one is, this did not quite, what I would call maybe if I, yeah, if I went just with the text, then you're looking at thirds and thirds, or, or the one to 1.618, the five eights, the rule of five eights. So interesting, um, that that really, I didn't think heavily about this, but I naturally just placed things 
ahead of time, uh, knowing that's what I, I wanted. Um, looking at some other things. Um, Here's an example of only two elements because let's, let's, because this is not the same day. Um, this was from a previous day. So let's look at that on its own as a single page. Two elements, but remember the harmony that we talked about. Um, so same size because I wanted to emphasize um, the fact that uh, the skies were changing. We, we went from, from June to July and everything, the colors change from desiccated desert and washed out sky, dry, dry, to super wet, lots of green, boom. So that as a design element was what I wanted to emphasize here. Um, that worked really well. So it's an even number of things, but with my metadata, that balances it. Does that, I think that makes, I hope that makes sense. Um, looking for, let's see. Now, here's another element that I really like to do sometimes. This is a kind of a messy page, um, but um, I like it, it worked. I did a big map and what I call um, one of my picture maps where I sketched in the, the shape of the place where we were going and, and it, I, I left the rest later. I, I just left this page like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make that a marker. And then this page is like super busy. Um, and I just kept adding things as I was seeing things. And it was much more of an organic thing where I really wasn't planning a whole lot here. Like this deer popped up and then, oh shoot, I wanted to, to get this um, the sparrow, um, get the details before it flew away, et cetera. So um, much more organic. Uh, way to do it. And then later in the evening, I did the map. This was not a map that I do in the field with all these little details. Um, I looked this up in a book, for example, a, 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 a printed paper book, no internet where we were. So, um, and now here's a fun idea. Um, <laughs> so you guys see this bird, which is a cormorant. Let me show you. So during our, I think we stayed for three days here at, at Point Reyes, and we kept seeing a lone cormorant everywhere we went. So I decided from a design standpoint, I added one on every page, just as a random little jokey thing. Um, there, and <laughs> there. So that was, just a fun, you know, you can, you can have fun. You can be whimsical. Here's another layout with the, the um, uh, one to 1.618 uh, element at the bottom, botanical detail I like. And, and when I, I saw that, that beetle, I definitely wanted to draw that. So I sketched that in. And then as we were sitting and I was sketching this, the egret flew in and I, I definitely wanted to capture that. So this was all done in the field sitting right, right in this little bay. So really fun, organic way to, to do that. Now, um, questions, go ahead and, and ask questions. Oh, here's one from Beverly. Do you only put fauna in the species list? I'm very interested in native plants. Oh, absolutely anything. Sometimes it's, so my habit is um, plants usually end up on my, in my narrative and uh, mammals and birds end up on a list. However, I could flip flop that um, and put just plants or another way you could do it. Let me, let me uh, grab another piece of paper here. Why not? You could do it this way. Because if you're really interested in, in plants, set up your page so you have your your basically so as, as you and you know you're going to be in an area for a while either a day or all day and you know there's going to be lots of stuff you can do uh mammals and birds here and plants here and just keep a running list. And sometimes I'll, I'll do continued on page, you know, next page. And then 
I'll turn the page. Let me see if I can find one where I do that, have done that. Um, probably not. Not in this set. Uh, oh yes, yes. This this was up. This is up in the um, a very text heavy. Oh, this was a very text heavy page because I was copying something off of a sign. Um, the ice and geographical terms that the Inupiaq use in uh, northern Alaska. So I wanted to get that down, and then I I took this off off of a sign. And so this species list, species seen and heard, uh, and it goes continued on page 115. So I'm not linear. So 115 there, it continued down here. So another example of a really organic page is I was playing with berries. I was actually using the juice of the berries to imprint them here. Um, and this little squirrel popped up. So again, this was already on my page. So I just like, made it so he was poking out there. Um, a very organic way to do it. Um, I knew I was gonna play with my berries down here and the color kind of brings your eye there. It's not really even or anything. This was done in the field. Um, so I, I wasn't being super precious about layout here, but it works. So somebody's asking about this, um, the, the, Field notebook. This is uh, a leather binder uh, my husband made for me. Uh, this is at least 25, almost 30 years old, 30 years old. Um, it's super simple. It, I can lace any paper into it I want using leather, leather, uh, these are shoelaces um, with three holes. And I then archive my pages in inexpensive three ring binders. Um, and I index them. Oh, there's my Mars field trip. <laughs> um, so my page number, and then I index them so I know where to find things. Um, and I have a whole tutorial on that. But that's, this is something I can use my, I put my paint palette here and I can hold this and just in my lap with one hand and sketch or I can stand. I don't even have to sit to use it. So it works really well for me. I'm trying to figure out a way to um, produce a template that people can use. I've had lots of people ask, trying to produce these to sell, even though it's super simple, it's just cowhide. Um, with the binding like that. Um, you can see how old it is. This has been on uh, five continents with me, hundreds of thousands of miles. Um, so uh, I'm trying to work on a template, but to produce these by hand, it would be too expensive, I think, um, because it, it takes a lot of work to make. Uh, so anyway, uh, oh, nine by six is the size, is the paper, uh, nine inches by six inches. So. Um, more questions. I'm going to flip back to, so you can see my face instead of me being disembodied. <laughs> um, so go ahead and if, if anyone has, you know, raise your hand if you want to ask a verbal question. It would be um, a little easier than, um, I think if I've missed your question in the chat, please just raise your hand and um, ask it verbally. Um, any message? Oh, great. Do we have a, somebody want to do a question? Um, what paper do I use? Um, oh, I'll get, let me ask the paper question and then Valerie will get to you. I use 90 pound um, cold pressed watercolor paper um, from B paper. B-E-E -E is now owned by, um, it's uh, Royal Brush Company. Uh, it's all paper is really hard to find right now because of supply issues, uh, but you should be able to, to find it um, in the future, uh, hopefully. So it's B paper. It, it's not super textured. It, it takes a uh, uh, pen really well. 
and really great for watercolor, even if you do a fair amount. Okay, so Valerie, shoot. Hi, good morning. Um, just wanted to ask a, a, a little, if you wouldn't mind putting that uh, little metadata bookmark thing sure. in the chat. Oh, I'll have to create it. Um, I don't oh. have. I don't have okay. a PDF, a shareable PDF yet. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I can also send you one, Valerie, too. So anyone who's, yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put, put that in just for, to remember to do that. It's just a little bookie mark thing. Um, well, uh, you, you don't have to go to the trouble of sending me one because Santa has been given orders to um, purchase things from your shop. So oh, well, if Santa did, then there will be a yeah. data ruler in Santa's bag. Well, let's just wait and see what Santa does. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can follow up. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Sandy, go ahead and, and ask your question. When I look at your pages, your metadata looks like a visual element to me. It Do is. Do you just tune it out so you don't see it? No, because I think it's the most important thing to start with. I okay. think it's the most important thing, as I said, um, for me and the way I, why I, I record things um, is I need that metadata. I often, um, my husband and I write natural history books. Uh, we write travel uh, articles and books. I need that information. If I go back two, three, four years from now and refer to it, um, location is so important, weather, everything, or if I'm writing about a certain species. So for example, we're, we're updating a wildlife tracking book that we wrote, and I'm going back looking at my notes um, and, and drawings of tracks. That information about where it was, when it was, super important if I'm going to be knowledgeable about, for example, when are coyotes active, when, when am I going to see certain foxes um, or where, uh, things like that. So metadata is a, a visual element for me, but it's also probably the most important thing I do. Okay. So when I look at elements that I'm putting on my pages, should I count it and usually strive to have an odd number of elements? And that's, as I was showing, um, my metadata is a strong visual element. So I would kind of like yeah, take that into account. Uh, I think I showed, showed a page, I can um, try to find it again where I felt like, oh, it was the, the single tree. The metadata ended up being a strong visual element. Let me, let me show you that again, um, flip it open here. Come on, focus. Um, you see that it balances. If it wasn't yeah. there, let me let me grab. If the metadata wasn't there, let me get a thing to cover it with. Then it's if that were all text, I don't think that would be as attractive a page. Yeah. There now, a lot of people don't do that kind of metadata, so you would maybe have a headline. Or, or make your, your date, you know, night, a big pretty, you know, my, my date and location, maybe that I would put in really pretty big block letters or fancy calligraphy or something like that, that would balance it nicely. Um, if you do, normally do your metadata really small down in a corner, then you're going to want something else to anchor that the eye's going to go from left to right if, if we're in in that that zone um, and go from there. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay. Um, so Jackie was asking, how much do you do in the field versus back in camp? Um, when do you do the, the watercolor? So in general, uh, my preference is to do almost everything out in the field. So for example, um, the, these, oh, can we, let me show you. Okay, that's a good one. Um, these, this is a great example. We were driving on the Dalton Highway and boom, we saw a peregrine falcon sitting on a post. Er, stopped, my husband got out his, his camera and I did these quick sketches using, I'm really loving this purple uh, pencil lead. Um, 
I don't like the blue that Jack, Jack's actually gone to, to blue, to, from blue to purple now. I like it better. Now it doesn't erase, but it allows me to be like really quick. And so I did that and I just left this on the page um, and I wrote in this info, but then I, st I stopped because a few miles farther on, ah, there was a muskox and we saw him for literally like well, three minutes. Um, and so I got his shape. And then in the evening in camp, I did these two from the photos that my husband took. So those were really detailed. Um, an example of in the field, um, this was sitting at Tamales Bay um, at White Gulch. And I did this all in the field. That's my preference. Um, I use, uh, this is my paint kit. Um, I, I use a minimalist approach. You can see it on my website. I just use um, the, the true primary colors, a cyan, a magenta, and a yellow, and a dark blue, and a burnt sienna. And that's all I use uh, to create everything that you're looking at. That's all I need. So I like to go really minimal and not fuss around with that and focus on observation. Um, oh, the purple, Cindy, Cindy says, I was just getting ready to order some purple pencil lead. Um, it, 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 it's gonna depend on the size of your pencil. So this I took, I think took um, seven millimeter, but you have to just Google it. Um, you have to know what size your pencil lead is. Um, there's, there's lots of different sizes, so I can't really, say exactly which it was. Um, you could just buy purple colored pencils, you know, oh, <laughs> you can just buy purple colored pencils. So Valerie, go ahead and... Um... Sorry, um, two things. Well, never mind. What, one of the things is with our weather, we're having to do a lot of work indoors. And um, often at the public library that's a space that we use I feel a little bit I, I just don't know how to handle the, the metadata when I'm always at that same latitude and longitude oh, and I know, you uh, know I do it all the time I mean uh, this 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 book is pretty heavy on um I'm looking at my journal right now uh, the last six entries I have are all to Mamak Hill it's going to be but your weather is going to change a little bit Go, I mean, your outdoor weather might change a little bit. Maybe not in where you are for the next five months. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, repetition is part of nature journaling, right? Um, you're looking at things over time. So if you're in the same location and you know, your backyard, and that's what you've been doing for the last six months, it's going to be interesting to see what's changing and what's different in your own backyard or the own space. Um, so, uh, Great. Uh, okay. Here's a great you. comment from Jessica. Um, reflecting on the invention of nature by Alexander von Humboldt. Fabulous. Yes. Um, that is something everybody should look up. I've, I've got the full set. This metadata you're recording makes me think of his meticulous notes and observations of the natural world. So he went out down into Central South America and um, and, and that's what he was doing. He was an explorer, naturalist, biologist. And that's what we do as naturalists in our notebooks is we keep extensive notes um, um, and learn. And that's, that's what's super cool about it. And this is just a way for me to share how we um, juxtapose that information with making it also beautiful and attractive. So uh, thank you for that comment. Uh, Mary's says uh, Crayola has erasable colored pencil sets that are pretty handy. Great to know. Um, wonderful. Okay, any other comments? Um, I'm, I'm just checking the chat. Great. Okay. Well, I hope this was um, super useful for you guys. And if you have questions, let me know. I'm going to put, let me put the um, links in the chat again. Um, I'm also going to put uh, 
if you enjoy uh, if you enjoy these 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 free ones that I do, I do um, give people uh, this link for a tip jar that I can get in here. And let me put in the others as well. Um, we always appreciate support for these, but the PDF, um, Paula, were you able to download the PDF? I wasn't sure. Um, otherwise, email me, I'll send it to you. Great, all right, everybody. I'm going to switch to gallery view and sign off shortly. Unless there's any more questions. Um, I hope everybody gets out and tries some of this this weekend. Um, it's beautiful here, uh, wherever you are. I hope you can do that. Right? Thanks, Roseanne. Thank you guys for coming. And I'll be getting the recording out in a, in a day or two. Because I'm going to be journaling. <laughs> it was excellent. Thank you. I'm so glad you liked it. It was fun to geek out on, on the, um, on the, the, especially the Fibonacci stuff. And there's a link in the PDF for the, for a, of a great article Paul um, Maroka and I worked on at Tumamog that describes the full Fibonacci thing, which is really cool. So um, take a look there. That was really fun. So great. Do you, do you do in-person workshops? Yes. Uh, after COVID settles down, we'll be doing more. I, I, we started doing uh, live again at Tumamak Hill, but I wasn't getting enough people to fill them. So, so we, we're still seeing people being nervous about this breakthrough. Um, so um, yes, the answer is yes. Um, and there will be, I hope in 2022 to be doing a lot more and traveling around. I'll be in Montana with um, in uh, June, what are the dates, Valerie? Oh gosh. I've, yeah. I've, well, just stay, stay on my stay on my email. I'll be live in June yeah. with with Valerie. So, yay! Um, so, we'll, I'll be doing more of those. So, okay. All great right. as always. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great. Thank weekend. you. It was great. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.